Today's video is going to be all about paper. So I'm going to walk you through a couple of different papers that I've worked with and give you a couple of the um, advantages and disadvantages of each option as well as show you some of the texture uh, of these different papers. So to start, I have some test prints that I did on six different papers. Uh, these are things, for the most part, that I commonly use, with the exception of maybe this one here. And I'm going to walk you through least expensive color options and then sort of more typical letterpress options. And these are my most commonly used papers here. So on the left, you can see I have, for the first sheet, it's just a piece of copy paper. This is just like an ecru... Um, it's just a regular digital paper that you might use through your printer, through a laser printer. And you can see that I can letterpress print on it and I can get an impression. It definitely shows through and to some extent you might get some curling or some buckling in the paper. So it doesn't really matter. You can use really cheap paper. It's just, it's not going to hold, like it's not going to have the depth that another paper would, but you can still get an impression and use it for small ephemeral things or for test prints. This one here is a cardstock from Michael's Craft Store. It's just a butcher block type of paper. You can see, you can definitely see the impression through the back on this one as well. It's a little bit heavier and it would work perfectly fine for something like folded cards. So this is really inexpensive and it's great for kind of experimental stuff. It's got a slick sort of surface. So you're going to be able to get probably half tones on this as well. So those are our two cheaper papers. Here are my two favorites for color. So if I need a colored paper, I'm going to go with one of these two options. This is French paper and it's this is just sort of like a slate gray. This is probably my favorite for anything like folded cards or letterpress invitations that are going to be mounted into something. Uh, you can see on its own, you're definitely going to get some impressions show through, but it's got like a nice firm feel. It's really smooth. It comes in a ton of different colors and finishes. And the best thing about this is you can go right onto French Paper's website and order whichever one you want. You don't have to go find a paper supplier and then see what they have in stock. Any of their papers that they currently have on offer will be available on their website. So if I'm doing color, this is probably one of my top choices. So second one is Color Plan. And this one is a little bit heavier, just that I currently have. This does come in other weights. But uh, this has a really nice feel to it. Um, it comes in a variety of colors. I believe it has around 50 colors and eight weights up to it, something around 700 GSM, which is really heavy. Not all the colors are available in every weight, but they do have a lot of different colors. The only disadvantage of this one is you can't order directly from their site, I believe, unless you're ordering a really huge amount. So you're probably going to have to search for this through a paper supplier like paperworks.com. So that's our other color. These are my two most common uh, letterpress wedding invitation papers, especially if the invitation is just gonna stand by itself in the envelope. So the top one here is just 110 pound Letra. And this is a cotton paper, so it is very environmentally friendly in that no trees are cut for this paper. It's cotton, so it's recyclable. It's maybe slightly more sustainable. Uh, it has a little bit less impression show through on the back. It's a really nice paper. It has a very, let's see if we can pick that up, just like a subtle, soft texture to it. Really nice. And what's really great about this paper is it's super reliable. This kind of paper is gonna print pretty much the same way every time. I wouldn't choose it for something like half tones personally. I prefer a slicker surface for that. But it's great for almost any letterpress process with the exception of folding. I don't think that this paper scores or folds super well takes the score great, but it tends to be kind of thick and sort of crack and have a lot of stiffness and memory to it. So once it's folded, it really wants to sort of snap back to its original shape. So not my favorite for folded cards. They do have thinner weights that work much better for folded cards, but I wouldn't choose the 110 for that. This is one of my favorite sort of first step to luxury papers. It's a little more expensive than Letra. It comes in two different weights. It comes in this one and then a heavier weight that's like roof shingle thick. This is wild. And I love it because it has a very subtle watercolor texture. You might be able to pick up a little bit there. And it takes a gorgeous pillowy plush impression without a ton of show through on the back. So this only comes in one color. It is a really nice paper. I'm a big fan of it. It's firm. It takes easy prints. 
uh, I, it will die cut well, but I wouldn't recommend this one for folding either. All right, so let's talk about a couple um, digital papers. At least that's what I call them. So one paper that I actually really like if you're trying to do a combination of digital printing with letterpress printing is Accent Opaque. Um, this is the 80 pound. It's great for folded cards. It's a little bit thinner. It will work well for mounted cards as well, which I'm just about to show. I do like this one. It's it's not something I'm using all the time, but it has a lot of versatility to it. It also works really great for laser toner foiling. So it's just a really nice all-around paper that I like to have. Now, if you're really looking for something super easy and you want to make the least amount of effort or you don't have a good paper cutter, then you can buy pre-cut cards. And there's a lot of brands that do pre-cut cards, including Letra, but these are just really simple and really nice. And all of these come from... Uh, cardsandpockets.com and what's just so simple about this is they have some different papers and some different weights so it's a little bit thicker here this one's much thinner sort of a writing weight but they're all cut to the exact size you need to match all of their different pocket folders so if you're looking to do something where you're going to have multiple layers or mounted cards like this where we have a blue bordering card and then an invitation these will work great you don't want to have um, paper that's too thick in here, and I can tell you from experience, it's just really hard to close them, and it's really hard to stuff the envelopes if you go too luxurious on the paper inside a pocket folder. But they come in all these different sizes, including sort of stacking sizes for this side pocket here. And then all of these papers, at least these bordering larger cards, will come in any of the colors they carry. So it's really easy to mix and match and have consistency across your invitation suite. So I do really like these. I don't think that cost-wise they tend to put you out really far ahead of Letra or something like that because they're kind of charging you a little bit of a premium for the pre-cut feature of it, but they are really nice and they do make some beautiful invitations. And you can see on this one I actually have a wood grain deboss that they offer. Now regarding the metallic envelopes that they sell, these print perfectly fine if you're doing addresses or something like that. For example, this here. So I don't have any trouble with metallic papers. I think these are actually Star Dream by Nina. That would be my guess if I was to guess who made these papers. But these print perfectly fine for addresses. They will print you know, multiple color letterpress pretty well. I'd go with a lighter color. Um, the ink tends to be almost a little more transparent on them for some reason. It just seems to lay down a little bit thinner but I haven't had any issues printing these envelopes. Very simple to print. And if you're looking for a one-stop shop, then I do recommend a place like Cards and Pockets, LCI Paper, Envelopes.com, something like that. It's a really great um, place to get this sort of stuff. So those are our digital papers. Now let's look at a couple luxurious options. So I have a few different ones here. I have some handmade paper, which is really beautiful. Uh, this is just something that was uh, purchased off of Etsy. And there's a lot of different places you can get this. What really shines about this paper is it takes a gorgeous impression because it's very soft and the decals are just beautiful. The only disadvantage of this is you're never gonna be able to get hairline lineup because every time you feed it into the press, the decals are gonna compress a little bit different, so it's gonna be very hard to get a perfect lineup. So you've gotta have designs where the color elements are far enough apart, or it's one color where you're not gonna notice any misalignment. This is another really beautiful handmade paper. I believe it's handmade in Peru by an Italian company, and it's super thick. It's from the Don Bosco paper situation. I don't know exactly if they call themselves. I guess it's Artesanos Don Bosco. And it is incredibly thick. It's gorgeous in its texture. I'm sure you can see that on camera. It's just beautiful. The only disadvantage of this paper is I'm sure it's a little bit pricey. I don't know the exact price because you have to order it directly from them and I believe their supplier is actually in Italy. So any customs or things like that you're going to be on the hook for. But one thing that is really cool about this company is they run a charity that's associated with the paper making so they're hiring artisans to make this paper and in the end it's really beautiful. 
and they do offer deckled sheets as well. So this is really gorgeous. If you're looking for like texture, these are some of the things I might suggest. Handmade papers made to your final size so that you don't have to cut off the decals or something like this with a ton of texture. Now you can print on watercolor paper. It tends to be incredibly cost prohibitive because water, like a good watercolor sheet with nice size in it is gonna cost you a lot of money. So you'll wanna find something that imitates it without having to spend you know, $15 a sheet on a really nice watercolor paper. So those are a couple great texture options. Now, if you're interested in something a little bit different and really luxurious, I do know a supplier that makes these gorgeous beveled edge papers and they're beveled and then edge painted, which is really, really different. I've actually never seen this before. So you can see that you're really gonna get a chance to appreciate that edge painting because the bevel faces up, you're not gonna miss a lot of the edge. You're gonna really see that on every single sheet. So they offer a variety of different colors I believe they're considering coming out with this rose gold color, but they do offer a copper, a gold, and a silver, and they can custom mix, so I don't have the prices for that. So this is price paper beveling, and you might have seen this in one of the printed posts I've shown before. They do offer matching envelope liners, and their edging comes in at least two different weights here. So they have the slightly lighter weight, which this is, this feels kind of like maybe a 220, 220 pound or a 300 GSM weight. And then this one is definitely a little bit heavier. I'm, I can't really guess. I might say that that's at least 700 GSM. It's kind of a little bit of a mystery. So something kind of interesting, and these are all samples from them, is they're showing you a comparison here between the edge painting and the beveled edges. So this sheet, really nice thick heavy sheet is edge painted. It has flat square edges, but you'll notice that these, you can really see the edges a little bit better because the bevels face upward. So if you're looking for something really, really unusual or really different and you kind of want to do a really simple print, but have the paper stand out, this would be a really nice option. So that's price paper beveling. Okay, so for this last section, let's take a look at some finished invitation suites and talk about some of the papers that I used in them and why I chose those papers. So, you may recognize this from one of the previous videos that talks about how to do a letterpress job from start to finish. And in this one, along with this one, I used Crane Letra as my main paper. And there's a few reasons for that. I think it's a really nice middle ground for these because it's got some weight to it. It takes a really nice impression, but it's something that's gonna mount into these really well and not be too thick for them to fit in the envelope and mail. So you can see metallic envelopes. These are actually in two different colors. So this is the, the softer pearl white, and this is the fluorescent white. And they're both really nice and kind of have different applications. I thought this looked really nice with the green to be a little bit softer. And this one just looked really nice with that crisp navy and that orange. So this one also features some half tones, which you can see even though it's Letra, it printed relatively well. You're gonna sometimes get a little bit of darkening at the edges of your half tones. But for this one, I think it was actually a really nice choice. And then this is a metallic silver printed on the folder itself. I did cut the flap from this one. So those are Letra, that's probably one of my top choices. That or Savoy, which is a very similar feeling paper, just a little bit slicker. Uh, those would be kind of my choices, a 110 weight, 300 GSM paper that's gonna fit really nice in those folders. Now this one is similar. I've actually done French paper for this. So it's a teeny bit lighter. You can see that it's maybe slightly thinner, but it takes an impression really, really well. It's a smoother paper obviously comes in a ton of different colors. And you can see there's not a lot of impression show through back there. So it actually works great for this process. I do really like this paper. I think it mounts in really nicely. And to be honest, when you really see them in the folders, you're not going to be quite as picky about the paper itself. You're really just gonna be appreciating the printing and then sort of the color as it goes together. So I have one more and this one which is currently mounted to this piece of paper, 
is wild paper. So this is really heavy, really thick. And in my opinion, it doesn't always work for these folded invitations because it makes the folder really thick and it's super hard to stuff in the envelopes. So if you pull it out here, you can see it's a beautiful paper. It takes a gorgeous impression and it has that really lovely watercolor texture to it. But when you have three pieces in here, it's really very, very thick. So if you really want to get that texture, I think it's a great option, but I wouldn't put like all three pieces and then envelopes with liners and then put this in an envelope with a liner. It just tends to be a lot going on. It gets a little bit on the heavy side, but it is a gorgeous paper. I think this one is probably my favorite for like standalone invitations. If you're just going to be putting the invitation straight in the envelope, I really do like something heavy like the wild, one of the beveled papers, that really, really heavy Don Bosco one. There's so many different options, but I do think that the heavier papers work better as sort of standalone invitations, and then the slightly lighter ones look really great as mounted invitations.